What's up everybody, it's Jason Frausto for TennisUnleashed.net. And in this video, we're gonna do some match analysis breakdown of Daniil Medvedev's game and find out what makes his game so unique. If you wanna find out what makes him different than everybody else on tour, stay tuned because it's coming up next. All right, so first let's just talk about damage, right? Damage is anytime you get your opponent on their back foot, get them off balance or get them on the run and force them to hit a little bit of a weaker ball than they wanted to. So most pros on the ATP tour do damage with their forehand more than they do it with their backhand because you usually get more speed and more spin. But is that the case for Medvedev? Let's jump into some points and find out. All right, so here we have Nadal serving on the near side. We've got Medvedev returning on the far side pretty much from zone five. He likes to return deep in the court, especially on first serves, consistently from zone five. So let's see what happens here in this point. We have a serve right to the Medvedev backhand, right? He's extremely comfortable on his backhand. It's a huge weapon for him. And he hits this return here, and let's see what happens. It lands in the deepest part of zone two, which forces Nadal onto his back foot. So that's not ideal for Nadal. And how do we know Nadal was on his back foot? Well, he finished inside the court here, right? And he had to back up and he's pushing off the back foot to hit this forehand. Usually for most players, that would signal more of a defensive position, but let's see what happens here. It's a pretty decent ball. It's not as deep as he probably wants. Kind of the back part of zone two right here and Medvedev is moving forward to receive this backhand right here. So he moves up and you can see by the way that Medvedev's hands are moving to the contact of the ball. They're moving like this he's flattening this out. So he feels comfortable attacking right here. He's not gonna loop this ball. Flattens it out right there, really aggressive, really drives and accelerates through that and gets Nadal into this defensive position where Nadal is damaged, right? So Nadal is significantly damaged by this shot. And up to this point, we've seen a bunch of big targets from both players, just really quick. If you haven't seen our videos before, the red areas here are two or less feet from the single sideline. Those are small targets and points. Anything in between the red here is gonna be considered to be a big target, okay? So Nadal comes back here with a big target and hits it really deep to try to neutralize Medvedev's attack, right? Medvedev, very comfortable on this backhand, comes from here, gets the high ball again, and it looks like he's driving it. One of the things that's been most effective for Nadal over the years, right, is to use high loopy balls to people's backhands to try to get them to hit short in the court. And with Medvedev, it's not as effective because he's six foot six. So naturally his strike zone is gonna be up higher than a player who might be 5'10 or 6'2". He's gonna have a higher strike zone, so the higher balls aren't gonna bother him as much as a shorter player. So you can see, again here, he's looking to drive this. He does drive it down the line, does an excellent job of driving it and getting Nadal on the dead run. He forces Nadal into a slice when he doesn't want to slice, okay? But Nadal has an excellent slice and one of the key checkpoints that we see on the slice from all the top players, right? Racket head behind their own head as they go to hit the ball. They have a lot of length on their backhand slice swing. Let's see if Nadal's able to take this and get it deep. He does do a pretty good job of depth here gets it into zone three. But while that ball is kind of floating over to Medvedev, that gives Medvedev time to do what we call load, right? So he's gonna squat down essentially, load his body, store the energy in his legs and get ready to deliver that energy from his legs into his upper body, through his arm and into the ball to try to hit an aggressive shot, right? So he's trying to load here. He loads and you can see he's really accelerating on the shot. Big acceleration but he actually ends up hitting this shorter in zone two. This should give Nadal the opportunity here to get aggressive if he wants to or open up the court if he wants to. Nadal takes it right away. He says, okay, you had your chance. You didn't hit the ball deep enough when you try to get aggressive. I'm going to get aggressive and move you around a little bit. So he angles him off the court and he hits the first small target of the point, right? Trying to do damage by maneuvering somebody left to right. You can do damage in a couple different ways, right? You can maneuver him left to right. You can hit, you know, short in certain situations to do damage. You can hit really deep. In this situation, it all is maneuvering him off the court with the angle to try to do damage. Let's see what Medvedev does. Medvedev again, look at the way the racket head here is approaching the ball. It's approaching the ball with a flatter trajectory like this. So he's looking to do damage even though he's in a tough position. He does that a little bit and he gets Nadal again 
through depth, right? He's hitting the ball deep here in zone three, gets him on his back foot. Now Nadal, again, good off his back foot, still able to attack most people. And it looks like he's gonna take this forehand and drive it down the line based on the racket position here and the angle of his chest and his hips. Let's see what he does. He does that, drives it down the line and gets excellent depth in zone three, gets Medvedev on the run. And Medvedev is forced, and this is a lesson on defense and, and how to play great defense. Medvedev is forced to give up a closer position on the baseline here and back up as he goes to receive the ball because that's giving him more time and he needs that time to hit a better ball, right? So he's given himself time and even with that time, he's forced here to hit with a late contact point, okay? So ideally with your contact on your forehand and backhand, you wanna have everything out in front like this. But in this situation, he's jammed and he's back here. That tells me Nadal's ball did significant damage and he's gonna be forced, whether he wants to or not, this ball's probably gonna land a little bit shorter in the court than he wants. So let's see what happens with this shot. There it is, right? Short in zone two. He doesn't wanna hit that ball short in the middle of the court, I can tell you that. And Nadal's positioning now is coming from behind the baseline and he got really tight to the baseline. Look at the footwork trail here, how he moved in. So this is his opportunity again to get hyper aggressive if he wants to. Let's see what Nadal does with the shot. He hits deep, which is great, okay? But he doesn't move the ball, you know, to this part of the court or this part of the court. So let's see what Medvedev does. Look at Medvedev. Comes from the back area of the court here a little bit and sees the ball isn't threatening and he moves up. Moves forward with the footwork. And again, it looks like he's gonna drive this flat. So loves that flat ball, hits that flat ball. This one skips through the court just a little bit and the doll plays a slice. Unfortunately for Nadal here, you can see the slice is a little bit short, right? It's not as deep as we want. We need a slice to be back here unless you're hitting it really short and forcing somebody to hit up on the ball. So Medvedev here, and you can tell the difference in Medvedev's swing path you can see the swing path here is more around the ball, okay? Which signals that he's gonna hit with more spin versus driving. So there it is, that scoop around the ball, right? Curling around the left side of the ball to hit this angle right here. And again, do damage to Nadal by getting him running off to that left side right here. Nadal's out into the alley, right? And typically from here, he likes to hit that reverse forehand and scoop up, so let's see what he does. He counters and kind of neutralizes here and hits him off the court with an angle. And we can see Medvedev scramble over. And again, look at the racket swing path on Medvedev here. The way he's swinging to the ball, he's driving through this versus coming over this. He has amazing control of his hands, whether it's driving through the ball, it's coming up and under the ball. Great maneuvering of the hands to do with the ball what he needs in a situation. So this flat driving crush shot does damage to Nadal. And this one's pretty significant because this is to Nadal's strength, right? It's that big forehand and he just drives right through it. He's surprised and he has to walk through the shot. You might say, what is walking through a shot or walking around a shot? Usually you wanna load your legs on a shot, especially on a forehand to do damage with the shot. You wanna push off the ground before you swing. But in this situation, Medvedev's ball gets through the court so fast and it kind of skips through. Nadal doesn't have time to set his legs and he's not in good position. So he has to walk around the ball a little bit and walk through it to find the proper contact. He doesn't have time to push off the court. So his shot shouldn't have much pace on it. Let's see what happens. It does not, okay. So he ends up hitting short in zone two here and this should give Medvedev a look at the ball. And he takes the first look he gets First really good look here and just crushes this small target winner. That's a crazy, crazy shot, okay? Right here, boom, small target winner. So let's just look at this one more time really quick. Serve right to the backhand. Medvedev gets decent depth on this, gets Nadal to back up. Nadal sort of hits this neutral high forehand right here. The first opportunity Medvedev gets, he flattens out the backhand, especially off these higher balls. High balls don't bother him. He'll flatten them out and hurt you with these and damage you. So he does it right here. Nadal loops. Medvedev again, high ball, no problem. Crushes it flat down the line. It skips through on Nadal. He floats the slice. Medvedev has an opportunity to get super aggressive here, but is unable to do anything with this. 
Nadal opens it up, gets Medvedev in a bad situation again, and Medvedev cracks a flat ball here and gets really nice depth in zone three right here, okay? And kind of neutralizes this situation. Nadal gets really aggressive, takes a chance, hits deep in zone three, gets Medvedev running. Medvedev hits shorts again. Flat, here's the slice. Medvedev shows his variety by hitting an angle with topspin here, right? Damages Nadal again. Flat again. Nadal ends up hitting short off this flat ball. And then Medvedev does a great job of just sinking his legs and his body down, especially for a guy who's six foot six, anchoring down on the run here and then cracks that small target winner, right? But he's able to do it because Nadal's ball landed short in zone two off of Medvedev's aggressive flat backhand. So in these points, Medvedev's backhand opened up opportunity for his forehand. All right, so let's move on to the second point now. We've got Medvedev serving this time on the far side to Dominic Team on the near side, right? So let's see what we get here. Serve right to the body, and it's a second serve. We see a lot more second serves to the body than we see first serves on the tour, right? First serve to the body is more of a surprise tactic these days, but Team steps around. And here's something I just wanted to comment on quickly about Dominic Team because we noticed this change a couple years ago. One thing with Team is he's definitely shortened his swing on the forehand side, right? Because he's had a lot of problems on faster surfaces, especially grass. His results have not as been as good as he wants them to be, right? His coaches want him to be. So he's shortened up his swing, but he still has a very significant tilt of the racket face forward here. Look at that tilt as he brings the racket back. All right, so if we just zoom in on that, you can see quite a bit of tilt yet forward, especially in the beginning stage here of the swing like this. Still has a lot of tilt. I'd like to see him take a little more tilt out of that forehand. And he's lessened that tilt by keeping his elbow position more down. So you end up with more tilt on a forehand if you really raise your elbow up and separate it from your body like this. And what that does is it takes more time for you to get through your swing. I don't advocate raising your elbow up to your shoulder. That's pretty much what team used to do. You wanna get that elbow down a little bit more. You don't wanna have it stuck necessarily right to your side, but just have a little bit of space between your elbow and your side, and that will decrease the amount of tilt. It's okay to have some tilt on your forehand. You just don't wanna have so much that it actually affects the amount of time it takes you to get through your swing. So I'd like to see team bring that elbow in just a little bit more than he's doing here and have it a little closer to the body than he does to take a little bit more of that tilt away. I think he'll find more success on faster surfaces. So great return here from team, right? So heavy. Guy hits a thick ball. It's just thick, heavy and deep and immediately gets Medvedev in a position where he's on defense. Medvedev scrambling back. He's definitely damaged. He's uncomfortable. His feet are close together, right? Which usually signals poor balance when you have your feet close together. So keep that in mind, right? But he's incredible for these positions. So he immediately recognizes that he's on defense, right? And then what he does again with his hands, he has such great hand control. He rolls up, look at that. Look at the hands and the split second decision-making. He's like, okay, this is not gonna be a flat ball. This is sort of an emergency defensive situation. I'm gonna roll up and try to achieve depth. So let's see if he gets the depth here. Voila, he does, it's awesome. Such a good weapon. Gets the depth, right? And he did this off of a very difficult ball and he neutralizes team and he actually forces team back. If you look at team's original decision with his footwork, he was gonna move in. He's moving forward from where he was on the return, right? He's going this way. But because of the depth from Medvedev, he has to back off a little bit and retreat to hit this backhand, which means it's probably more of a defensive backhand. Let's see what team does with it. He tries to loop up high heavy, right? But it lands just a little bit short here in the back of zone two and Medvedev moves in, body moving forward. And again, these high balls against somebody who's 6'6", really don't bother him on this particular surface. You can tell by the way the hands are coming through, he's driving this thing. He wants to go through the court and bam, there it is, right? It's amazing. When you're receiving a ball from this height and you're this tall and the net's, you know, three and a half feet down the line and three feet over the middle, you can pretty much hit down on the ball and drive it down when you're this tall. You can't do that when you're my height. And that's what Medvedev has mastered on this backhand side is the ability to kind of drive down over the net 
and really damage people with this flat backhand and boom, there it is. He's got teams scrambling now, teams hitting you know, from a really uncomfortable position. The contact point is further back than team wants it. It's a defensive contact point back here and he goes cross court, hits unintentionally short in zone one. So again, Medvedev setting up his forehand with his backhand, okay? Boom, there it is. So as soon as Medvedev gets a look, this is a really good look because Medvedev's got position inside the baseline. He's loading up the legs. We talked about the loading, right? Boom, big racketed speed and takes a safe small target down the line. Let's just look at it one more time real quick here. Serve to the body, high heavy from team. Not enough depth maybe though, pretty good depth, but could be better. Excellent hand control from Medvedev right here to curl up achieve depth and neutralize team's aggression right off the bat. He's like, you damaged me. I'm gonna figure out a solution to reverse this real quick. Counters there, counter neutralizes. Team hits up. Medvedev cracks the first backhand again here that he gets a good look at. So this is the first one where he's really got a chance to do something, crushes it, forces team into a short ball, and then uses his backhand to set up his forehand. So how do we know that Medvedev's backhand is actually stronger than his forehand? If we look at the match stats against Nadal in particular, Medvedev did damage 96 times to Nadal with ground strokes. 58 of those were backhands, that's 60%. So 60-40 versus his forehand. If we look at the match against Team, he did damage 85 times. 43 of those were with his backhand, which is just over 50%. It's 51%. So the stats back up what we're showing here in our point examples. All right, so let's move on to the next point here. We've got Medvedev serving on the near side to Nadal on the far side here. Let's get this started. Definite kick serve, right? Really signal the kick serve by one, the toss position being a little bit more to his left, a little more in line and closer to the hitting shoulder here, right? And then two, look at the path of the racket how it arcs off to the right like that. Definite kick serve, second serve. Nadal takes the forehand from that deeper zone five position, hooks it up. And another sign that a player prefers one stroke over the other is when they get a ball in the middle of the court and what they decide to hit off that shot. So if we look at this, Medvedev has all day on this loopy ball to step around it and hit a forehand if he wants to, but what does he elect to do? He takes a backhand off a neutral middle ball. Okay, where he had plenty of time to step around if he wanted to crank a forehand. Takes the backhand and hits this weak backhand inside out. It's got good depth, but there's nothing on this. This is a great chance for Nadal to get aggressive right here. Let's see what he does. He does get aggressive with his pace, really kind of heavy with some pace and forces Medvedev into this late contact position right here, right? So we talked about keeping your contact more out in front of your body. You can see Medvedev is forced back here, but he's actually really good from this contact position. And what I mean by that is he doesn't tend to hit a lot of winners or anything from back here, but he neutralizes with depth a lot of times from these crunched up positions, which is extremely difficult to do. And there he does it. So we're just talking about it and he does it. He hits deep in zone three somehow from this late contact position, right? A la Steffi Graf, right? And then Nadal takes the backhand and sees an opportunity to change direction and does a good job here directing the ball down the line and getting some pretty good depth here in the back of zone two. He forces Medvedev to come from this side of the court over here to this side of the court in a scramble situation. But Medvedev is unbelievably good with his backhand when he's rushed or doesn't have time. So let's see what he does. Cracks it cross court, flat, okay? On the run flat to zone two and forces Nadal to run from one side of the court to the other. This is counter damage for sure. He's countered him and damaged him at the same time. Let's see if Nadal can counter this and he can't. He hits a very weak ball short inside zone one right here. It landed, right? So this is not what he wants to happen. Short inside zone one. And then Medvedev eagerly moves up on this ball to try to do some damage here. So he moves in right away, boom and small target winner again. So the guy's incredible with his hands and knowing what to do in each situation. Like, oh, I need to use topspin here to do this. Oh, I need to flatten this one out and maneuver my hands a little bit differently here to do this. You have split seconds to make these decisions and he seems to make the right decision almost every single time based on this scenario. 
let's just check this out again here, right? Kick serve, Nadal, weak forehand. On this particular return, Medvedev has the option to take a forehand, no problem. He decides he wants to take a backhand, right? That's a surefire sign that he's more comfortable with that shot. Takes it, hits it weak, Nadal starts to open it up here, aggressive. Medvedev does a good job of neutralizing that ball with a poor contact point. Nadal changes direction, does damage. And again, when he's rushed, Medvedev is incredible with his hands and sinks his legs down there, 6'6". Six, six, Gets the legs down, gets the hips down, controls the hands, counter damage right here to Nadal. Nadal hits short. As soon as he gets the opportunity, points over. All right, so let's just look at the next point real quick. We've got Medvedev here serving on the near side from the ad side and team returning close to the baseline on the ad side. So let's see what we get. Kick serve here, second serve point, kick serve. Team does an excellent job of moving up and inside the baseline to take this early inside zone three, okay? Taking time from the server to try to jam them up and get them to hit something weak. So let's see what happens. Beautiful return, okay? Good depth on this. But what does Medvedev do here? Medvedev is on the left side of the court, right? All he has to do is take one step to his left and he could probably take a forehand on this, no problem. But what does he do naturally when he has no time? He takes a backhand. When he's rushed and he doesn't have time to think about what he's gonna do, he goes backhand a lot, all right? That's a natural tendency for him. He's super comfortable hitting it. So he does that here, drops his hips and his body down, keeps his head in a pretty good and well-aligned position, considering the scenario here of what's happening, and then uses his hands here and what does he do? He counter neutralizes the situation. So good, so good. Comes up on it and team is like, wait, I'm going this way. He's expecting this. He's not thinking it could possibly go cross court. And then Medvedev hits a ball almost in zone three off a tough shot. So he forces team to go from an aggressive return position here into a position where he's like, uh oh, I'm hitting a slice from a semi-open stance and now I'm on defense, right? So he countered really well here. And then team hits a really nice slice though, considering the situation, deep in zone three. And then what do we have here? This exchange of slices back and forth, little cat and mouse. But look at how deep Medvedev's slices are, right? There's the first one here in zone three. He's like, I'm not gonna give you anything really short. There's another one in zone three. Another one close to zone three, back of zone two. And then finally, another one here in zone three. So his depth is incredible. And that depth here on this particular one gets team to actually back up on a slice. It's really difficult to get somebody to back up on a slice. You have to hit it really deep to do it because it's not like topspin where it's gonna drive and jump forward. So incredible depth here. Team backs up and you can see teams like, hey, this isn't very comfortable for me. I'm really squatting down. This is not the shot that I wanna hit and I'm having to really bend for this. It looks like teams actually damaged by this slice and damaging somebody with a slice is not easy to do. So let's see what happens. There it is, short. Fringe part of zone two there, almost zone one. This is an opportunity for Medvedev certainly to step up and he does. There it is. He moves forward here with his feet drives a flat angle cross court, which you don't see very many people in the world hit, especially on the men's side. And now he's got teams scrambling from one side of the court to the other to play some defense here. Team scrambles over and he's gonna have to hit this up. He doesn't have a choice. The ball is being contacted below the height of the net. He's gonna have to hit it up, which immediately signals to Medvedev, right? Look at Medvedev. He's like, okay, I know you're hitting a ball from a low position that's a slice. That means you're gonna have to hit it up. Medvedev's charging in knowing that's the situation, okay? It has to be hit up. So he might be able to sneak and hit a volley. Let's see what actually happens here. He's sneaking in. Uh-oh. <laughs> Team did a really good job here to counter from a horrible position and Medvedev went in a little too far, right? So Medvedev comes up and then he's like, uh-oh. He has to back up here and hit off of his back foot and he's severely jammed by this shot right here. So he's super jammed by this. And again, the contact point is really far back. Let's see what actually happens though with the result of this shot. Wow, okay. So he's jammed, he's on his back foot and what is he able to do? I'm just gonna hit a small target cross court here from a really bad position, okay? 
basically when you play Medvedev, expect the unexpected. So here, team's running again now. He's like, what? How, how does this happen? How are you hitting that from there? Or why are you hitting that from there? It's crazy. So he's damaged again on the dead run, hooks it cross court short. It does a pretty good job actually of getting Medvedev to have it take a lot of steps here and a lot of movement to this ball. He's got him in the alley, which is pretty tough from team's position. So that's a pretty good little counter there. And Medvedev has shown, at least in these matches, that he's not doing a lot of damage with the forehand, right? Especially in scramble positions, where with the backhand, he can. So he takes this and ends up hitting it short in zone two. And team has a really good look. Team's moving forward and he's loaded. Let's see what happens. And then unfortunately he makes an unforced error, but he had set it up really well. But let's just go back for a second here. Kick serve. We know Medvedev prefers the backhand because he takes the time to step around and hit backhands in scramble situations. That usually gives away your preference of shot, okay? So he does that there. They get into the cat and mouse battle back and forth like this. Medvedev shows excellent depth on his slice, right? Which prevents him from being easily attacked here. Does damage on this one. Takes this flat backhand angle, which is a shot not many people can hit. Hits a crazy small target from a bad position. Coughs up that short forehand, and then team makes the unforced error, unfortunately, there. All right, so, so far it seems like all I've been talking about is Medvedev's backhand and that he prefers his backhand over his forehand. But what's something that Medvedev does with his backhand that almost nobody else in the world does on the ATP Tour? Let's find out. All right, so we've got Medvedev here serving on the near side to Nadal on the far side, and let's break this point down. So we've got a big, look at that flat serve right there, just cranks the flat serve out wide. Nadal does a good job of moving forward with the body to intercept the angle a little bit, right? Does a good job, hits that reverse forehand, comes up on it right here. It's a signature shot, and then hits it into zone two and takes a little time from Medvedev but what's Medvedev do instinctually, right? He goes around an obvious forehand here and goes to the backhand to take a backhand on this shot. And just, again, when players don't have time to react and they don't have time to think, whatever they select, that's usually their natural preference. He is moving around forehand opportunities to take backhands when he doesn't have time to think about what he likes more, okay, or what he wants to do. So, boom, cracks that. And this is the shot that I'm talking about that he does that basically no other ATP Tour player does. Djokovic can do this, but inside out backhands, all right? From poor positions to a small target and just crushes it and gets Nadal on defense, does damage, significant damage, and then Nadal puts the ball in the net. Most players on the ATP Tour are incapable of backing up and away from a ball and hitting an inside out angle to a small target to do damage to another player. There's a reason Nadal over here is literally having to sprint across the court from here all the way over to this side because he's surprised this is happening. He's not expecting this. I said it before, with Medvedev, expect the unexpected, okay? And there it is, boom. All right, let's watch that one more time real quick. Big flat serve out wide. Excellent return from Nadal here. Medvedev moves around the ball. Inside out backhand to a small target, does damage, and then Nadal can't cover it. Unbelievable. All right, so let's move on to the next point now. We've got Medvedev again serving from the near side, and we got Dominic Team on the far side returning here from zone five. Second serve, Team steps around, wants to hit that big heavy forehand, right? You can see he's really going up on the ball like this. And he does that and drives it really high and deep against Medvedev here and does significant damage by getting Medvedev to really have to back up. Look at the footwork pattern of where he was and where he ended up. Now again, amazing hand control from Medvedev from these positions. He's able to use his hands and use his hips and his legs to get down, but use the hands to control the depth of the shot so incredibly well. What does he do? There it is. Takes a horrible shot situation and turns it into a shot situation where he does counter damage and he does that by getting the ball deep in zone three. Team's not expecting this. You can see team came from back here, moved up, but what's team doing now? He's actually had to back away from the ball with his feet 
because of the depth that Medvedev got. It's incredible, the depth. And there it is. He gets him to back away from the ball. And that probably means in this situation that team shot is going to be shorter in the court or weaker. It's not going to have a lot of pace on it. Let's see what happens. It is short, right? Gets him to hit short in zone one. And that means Medvedev can move up a little bit if he wants to. So he moves forward just a little bit here. And he hits a pretty decent ball, right? Backhand here. Gets pretty darn good depth again. Basically the fringe part of zone three there. And forces team into a little bit of this kind of weak slice situation here. So team hits this weak slice, it floats, lands short inside zone two. And now this is where you really have to watch out for Medvedev as well as when he's moving in. The guy's dangerous when he's moving back, way more dangerous when he's moving in. So he's moving in here, moves inside the baseline and really does a great job of sinking his hips down here, right? He's using the legs and uses the hands here to maneuver the direction of the shot. Boom, inside out backhand again to a small target. It's right on the edge of that red line there, the small target area. So inside out backhand to a small target does significant damage to team. Team is not expecting this. He doesn't think an inside out backhand's coming from here. It's not something you see people do. Forces him into the air and the point's over. So let's just look at it one more time real quick. Second serve, great return from team. Excellent counter damage here from Medvedev, able to use his hands and his legs combination to achieve depth where most guys would end up hitting this ball somewhere in zone two or zone one, hitting it short. He doesn't have that problem. He controls the hands unbelievably well. Team ends up hitting short because of that. That lets Medvedev now open it up a little bit more, forces team into this weaker slice here that lands in zone two. As soon as Medvedev gets his look, small target inside out backhand, and then forces team into an air. And another thing that really showed Medvedev's preference for backhands is his serve plus one, right? So serve plus one, after you hit your serve, it's the first shot that you hit in a point. Against Nadal, Medvedev's serve plus one was a backhand 64% of the time. Against team, it was a backhand 51% of the time. So really close against team. But again, it shows a preference to take a backhand on the first shot instead of a forehand. All right, so that wraps it up for part one of our match analysis of Daniil Medvedev's game. If you found this video helpful or you feel like you learned something today, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. I'm Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. We'll see you next time.